All right, let's try a few multiple choice questions together. So for example, four, if there is a very strong correlation between two variables, then the correlation coefficient should be, and we gotta figure it out. Well, it says very strong, okay? And then I see correlation coefficient. All right, correlation coefficient is asking you for the R value. So if I want a strong R value, Close to positive one, that's true. Close to negative one, that's also true. These are both strong. They're just in opposite directions, right? Positive and negative. So you see here, close to negative one or positive one. This is a better sentence because it's true for both of these. Uh, close to zero, there is no way to determine this. So you can see C is our answer. There are two times when we know we have a strong correlation, when your R value is close to one or negative one. All right, so in example five, it says you are given the following set of observations for variables X and Y. And I can see I have a numerical variable here and a numerical variable here. So again, I'm dealing with two numerical variables and it's asking me for the correlation coefficient. Okay, so again, they want the R value. So let me do this, we've got correlation coefficient. I know I've got X and Y. So I'm gonna just plug these into my calculator and run stat calc eight. That's gonna be able to tell me what my correlation coefficient is. So let me just scooch this up a bit. Okay. All right, so let's see if we can figure this out. I'm gonna pull my calculator in. I've already loaded my, my data values into L1 and L2. And then it's always the same calculator command, stat, calc 8 and then l1 comma l2 again just reminding you we are going to tack a third piece onto this in a few in a few examples all right so what is my correlation coefficient it looks like it is be careful here negative 0.8971 okay so let me go write that down Right, there is my answer. So for example, five, we should be getting D. All right, so let's take a look at examples six and seven. They're a little bit more convoluted, so we're gonna have some conversations about them. All right, but let's see if we can do example six. So example six says Pearson's correlation coefficient, so R, and this isn't Pearson the publisher, this was a statistician, is considered symmetric all right, symmetric because, a symmetric measure, excuse me, because. All right, so let's see if we can figure out which of these statements is true. All right, R. Is R symmetric because its values range from zero to one? Well, this can't be the, the right answer because the values don't range from zero to one. They range from negative one to one. So that is just inherently a false statement. That is not the answer to our question. All right. Is it symmetric because it indicates a causal relationship between two variables? And I've been saying this for a little bit, but correlation is not causation, right? Causation can only be determined in an experiment when you have an explanatory and response variable. So this is not a true statement. So that also cannot be our answer. The sign of R is the same as the sign of the slope. This is a true statement, so I wanna be clear. Your R value is positive if the slope of your line is positive. Your R value is negative if the slope of your line is negative. That is a true statement. We will see if that's why it's a, considered a symmetric measure. All right, it will be the same regardless of which variable is the X and which is the Y. And I really wanna hone in on this. This is also a true statement, but it might not feel true just yet. And I wanna tell you, none of the above is not the option. These are true statements. We wanna, again, unpack which of those statements is the reason that R is symmetric. So I wanna go back to the properties of R, okay? And I, I want us to look at this third bullet point where it says the value of R does not depend on which of the variables is considered X. That's gonna be the giveaway for the answer here. So let's read it again. The value of R does not depend on which of the variables is considered X. So what on earth do I mean by that? I still have my data for example five loaded in. All right, and you probably do too. 
And if you remember this calculator command, I'll, I'll review it for you. We did linear regression, so we did stat calc 8 L1, L2, right? And then we got this R value. So keep that R value in mind, and I want you to see something. If I change the order, if I went L2, L1 instead, let's remember these numbers, right? A was 4, B was negative 1.3, R squared was about 0.8, R was negative 0.8971. I want you to keep these four numbers in mind, and I'm about to push enter, and let's think about which numbers change and which numbers don't, okay? So when I hit enter, you'll see A is different, B is different, but R and R squared are the same, right? So it didn't matter which variable I called X. If I let X be the L2s and Ys be the L1s, even though they weren't, it didn't change the R value. So, what that's saying is when I do linear regression, all right, a plus bx, l1 comma l2, it's the same as when I go l2 comma l1. And this is symmetry, right? It doesn't matter which way I went, I got the same answer. So, or at least the same correlation. So the reason we consider it a symmetric measure is because of that property where it doesn't matter what you're calling x or y. It'll change your slope and your y-intercept, but it won't change the, the r value. So while this c is a true statement, this is a great true statement, it's not the answer to this question. That's not why we consider r a symmetric statistic or a symmetric measure. Okay. All right. Now here, we have some more to unpack. So this says, suppose that the correlation between two variables is 0.23. What will be the new correlation if 0.14 is added to all of the values of the x variable, every y variable is doubled, and then the two variables are interchanged? All right, so let's see if we can unpack this, because this has got a lot in it also. And this is really referring to the third and fourth properties of R. So here's what I'm referencing. When we look at the third and fourth properties of R, we just talked about the third one, where the value of R does not depend on which variables are considered x. Here we go, the next one. If I look at it, linear operations applied to the values of x and y have no effect on r. So when we talk about linear operations in math, we have four of them. We have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Those are our four linear operations. And to give you an example of something that is not considered a linear operation, um, square rooting is not considered linear. Squaring is not considered linear. But these four operations are considered linear. And linear operations have no effect on R. So let's go back to that idea with example seven. All right. So you see here, 0.14 is added to everything in X. That is a linear operation that will not change the R value. It says that the Y variables are doubled. That is multiplication. That is a linear operation, which will have no effect on R. All right? And then it says the variables are interchanged. And as we saw in example six, that has no effect on R. So with all of this, with all of these changes, R will still be 0.23. Okay? And if that's not gelling too well with you right now, that's fine if it doesn't, if those, those properties aren't kind of uh, making sense, I'm going to flip back over to my computer and show you how you could have deduced this answer just using data in your lists. Hey Math43, I wanted to give us a different way of attacking example 7. So let's say example 7 did make intuitive sense to you. No problem. We're going we're gonna to do this problem just using lists. So I have a feeling the last set of data you have in your list is from example 5. And I do too. So if I take a look at this, there are my numbers from example five. And just to remind ourselves, uh, the correlation example five was negative 0.8971. And if you're not sure how to find correlation, go back to your home screen. Stat, calc, we'll go eight, L1, comma, L2. All right, and we are gonna tack on that third piece once we start in on the next example. All right, so there it is, negative 0.8971. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the data from example 5, but I want to play out, let me keep this highlighted just so we've got it, I want to play out everything this said. 
So I want to take 0.14 and add it to all of the values in L1. And then I want to double every value in Y2. And I even want to change what I'm calling X and Y. And I'm going to do all of that on my calculator. And at the end of this, after I do all of these changes, you're going to see that my correlation stays at negative 0.8971. Okay, so to do this, let's go clear everything out. Let's go back into our stat screen, or our, our edit menu. Now we've used our calculator before as a spreadsheet, but it's been a little while. So let's, let's revisit that. I would like to add 0.14 to every value in L1, right? That's what this says. Add 0.14 to all values of the x variable. So I would like negative three plus 0.14, negative 1 plus 0.14, 1 plus 0.14, and 3 plus 0.14. And I don't want to do all that by hand. I could, but imagine if you had 100 data values. I don't want to do all that by hand. So here's what we can do. If you go up into the definition of L1, so that you see L1 has the black background. I'm not down here in the first cell. I'm up in the definition of L1. And I would like to redefine L1 as L1 plus 0.14. I would like to take every data value in L1 and add 0.14 to it. I'm about to hit enter, and when I do, you're going to see L1 populate with the new values. Great. Okay, there they are. Okay. If we look at this problem, it now says every, every Y value needs to be doubled. So let's go over to L2 and do the same thing. But again, make sure L2 has the black background, right? I'm not down here in the first cell where it says 8. I'm up in L2. And I would like to double, so 2 times L2. You don't even technically need to hit the times key, but I just want you to see where we're, we're going here. I'm about to hit enter, and it's going to auto-populate, right? Everything's now has been doubled. Great. Okay, so now I want to figure out what is the correlation. So let's go back to our home screen. Stat, calc, 8. The last thing it asked us to do is right here, the two variables are interchanged. So instead of L1, L2, let me do L2, L1. So I will do L2 comma L1. Oops. When I hit enter, you see that that correlation stays the same, right? It's still negative 0.8971. It hasn't been affected, all right? The slope and y-intercept have changed, but r and r squared have not. So what that's implying is if you started with an r of 0.23 and did all of these things, added 0.14 to every value of your variable, uh, every value of your x variable, doubled every y variable, doubled every y value, and even change the order they went, it's not going to make a difference. You're still going to wind up with r being 0.23. And then sometimes a question comes up, well, well what would change the, the correlation coefficient? Well, to answer that, we need to go back to this sentence here, where it says linear operations applied to the x and y values have no effect on r. When you hear linear operations, we're basically talking about two things, adding a constant or multiplying by a constant. And in example seven, we added a constant to every value in L1, right? We added 0.14. We also multiplied by a constant. We multiplied every value in L2 by that constant. So if you stay within those two, con two confines, addition, well really addition, subtraction, or multiplication, division, you're not gonna change R. And it also says up here, the value of R does not depend on which variable is considered X. So the fact that we flip flop them also doesn't make a difference. Okay, but what would make a difference? So let's, let me scroll back down, and I want us to remind ourselves about negative 0.8971, right? I'm gonna do something to destroy that number. So let's say, let me go into my stats, okay? And I will go up here. Let's pick a nonlinear operation from math. Nonlinear means as long as you're not multiplying, dividing, subtracting or adding, you're nonlinear. So how about squaring? All right, squaring is not a linear relationship. That is a quadratic relationship. So what if I took everything in L1 and I squared it? Okay. I'm gonna hit enter and it will auto-populate. Okay, so you see all those squared numbers now. Okay, let me go back to my home screen and let's run linear regression again. All right, when I hit enter, do we see that R has severely been changed, right? No longer negative 0.8971, it's negative 0.2912, right? Um, let me go back into my list again. I could, um, 
wow, what could we do? I'm trying to think of nonlinear operations. We can do exponents. So I can say take um, everything uh, in L2 and make that the exponent on E's. If you've used E's before, great. And if you haven't, just this is a nonlinear operation. These numbers get gigantic, right? But you'll see that R keeps on changing. Right now, R is 0.4495. So the long and short of it is, if you do anything with these four keys to your lists, R will not change. And when I say these four, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, right? And you can even flip-flop the order L1, L2, or L2, L1. If you do anything else, you're going to be in some trouble. R is going to change, okay? All right. Thanks, Katie.